good afternoon everyone uh, it's a pleasure to be here and moderating such a you know bunch of wonderful panelists uh, very interesting topic uh, though we are just uh, you know the last panel will try to gauge as much attention as possible from you all uh, very interesting topic in today's time and uh, that too you know if we talk about crisis crisis communication in today's day and age where uh, you know we we live in a screen age i would say as i always like to say that you know we are living in a screen age where we are always on the screen we are always on the move and uh, you know it's we are very vulnerable to a lot of crisis and it can stuck any time so uh, you know i think let's uh, quickly move i would say uh, you know anandita why don't you start with the uh, you know setting the context that you know how the how the crisis communication for co corporates has transformed over the years maybe uh, you know uh, what we can do is uh, you can highlight uh, what you think are a uh, top two most uh, transformative change that you have seen in last 8 uh, 10 years you know you can begin yeah okay uh, thanks aman uh you know there's always an advantage when you get to speak at the far uh, the uh, you're the first speaker so they uh, are a little short of points but i'm sure their experiences are so huge that they won't be short of points uh, okay so we we have lot of stuff in crisis communication <laughs> and and the kind of people yeah, we I, have i'm sure people have lot of stories to I tell i don't want to put them into crisis <laughs> no no but i'll just uh, no, see see we the time has evolved we know that it has evolved and crisis the type of crisis also uh, you know maybe they have they the patterns have also changed for corporates i think they become more practical because initially it was journalism and pr who used to t talk about uh, crisis now it is the age of digital media so uh, as we can uh, leverage that also a few points you know what co corporates have started doing is many of them they uh, it, see there are three phases of crisis we all know broadly speaking uh, pre crisis and uh, the crisis time and the post crisis no matter how many manuals we create or uh, we have a sop followed at the time of crisis what the most important thing which a uh, uh, the corporate or the person responsible can do is to keep keep calm that's the main uh, thing because what happens is when you are in crisis your uh, you, your you, know, you become very emotional and then you react in a way which is not well accepted by the public so that maturity has come why because of the real time information dissemination uh, because of the uh, social media so uh, this is definitely uh, one part of it and uh, second thing is uh, you know the we can see the face the leadership comes and uh, speaking out you know because nowadays in linkedin if you see then uh, the leaders who how many people really knew uh, that the leaders where they are speaking or where their uh, comments are uh, available unless uh, you read an article or a magazine on newspapers but they are all 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 on linkedin so they also know since every third day i post something i i am visible my visibility is much uh, better they have understood than the earlier. importance of being Bo synonym to the brand synonym yeah. to the brand so they become they have become more responsible in terms of reacting to the crisis that's definitely is Tushar, uh, one of the main points you would, would quickly uh, switch Yeah. would like Thanks, to switch to you and uh, i'm sure the the place which you are sitting spicejet you know the you so you face, mean, we face every hour every every day single <laughs> every day. every day every hour so, so uh, yeah. corporate communications and especially crisis communications is a very dynamic and evolving uh, role it's important to remember that every crisis is different uh, and there's no one size fits all solution uh, what may uh, be the ideal uh, response for a particular crisis may not work for another uh, situation and you know even after spending 20 years in journalism and 8 years in this particular role at spice jet i when i reflect i you know i after a crisis i think you know i could have done this thing differently and i shouldn't have done this and every time time you know there is a new learning correct, uh, correct. but crisis communication i feel personally has changed in the way that it's become more proactive than being reactive 
especially in the age of social media, you need to respond very quickly. And, uh, uh, you, you know, it has to be, the response has to be very quick and uh, you need to be very honest. There has to be a method in the madness. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, every single person, a social media user is now a reporter in itself. Absolutely. So, uh, to think that, you know, you can uh, hide things and you cannot be honest is, doesn't work. You need to be very honest, you need to offer solutions, and you need to uh, have empathy. However, I personally feel that in today's environment, uh, when sensational news scores over everything else, it's very difficult, you know, uh, beyond a point, if there is a crisis, uh, nothing much can be done. This is my personal view. and. Uh, I faced it very regularly, uh, a situation like this. And uh, see, the moment a sensational bit of information is uh, associated with the news, uh, then uh, it gets a lot of traction and non-beat reporters jump in. When yeah. non-beat reporters jump in, then it becomes then very difficult it, to, it's a to free, control. It's a free-for-all yeah. situation. Yeah, it's free for you can, you, you know, as a, as a former journalist and a communicator in my present role, I can know X number of journalists. Yeah, I yeah. Know, you and the people I, around you yeah, can only know yeah. X we number of people. Only, yeah. uh, we cannot know everybody. And once these non-beat reporters jump in, then it yeah. just goes out of control. <laughs> Subir, I would like to uh, come to you and, uh, you know, you would like to add to, you know, what uh, Tushar and Anandita have said, yeah. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, a couple of things, you were asking about the evolution, right? Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, first top thing… Two. Top two, according to you. Top two, yes, sure. Uh, one is definitely, it's become much more evolved than where it was eight years ago. It's more tech-enabled, it's much more uh, human-centered and very comprehensive now. Uh, second thing is that there's a lot of effort that is being put by the corporates for training the top-level people. That's something which I'm seeing. Uh, you know, a lot of media training happening around crisis communications is something that I'm seeing very, very rampant. We are being asked to kind of give training on various issues and specifically uh, about social media crisis management as to what are the do's, don'ts, how you should react, what you should say, what if your competitor is in trouble, should you be re reacting to it? Those kind of things are coming up. You should not get into the trouble. So those kind of things are, you know, something which I'm seeing more often now. Rafi, so would you would you like to also put some light on uh, the how the consumer behave has behavior has transformed over over these years to begin with, and then yeah. So sure. first, let me answer the two two things that you yeah. asked. What I've noticed in the last ten years, one is more transparency in dealing with crisis. I think the organization which is involved in it is ready to share far more than they were ready to share earlier. And second is direct communication, which means that. Whenever I've been involved in the recent last 10 years in crisis management, it is not only about the media. It is how do we communicate with the authorities, how do we communicate with our audience, how do we communicate with our investors, how do we communicate with our internal audience. So I think it's evolved a lot where we are playing a much larger role as communicators in managing crisis today than we did before. The difference in audience uh, or your consumers I think they are far more vocal now than they have ever been. Whether it is to stand by you or to throw brickbats at you. In both cases, your audiences come forward much more today. Today we are all opinion makers and we love to do that. And, and you know, and uh, absolutely right. So, become, have become more vocal and uh, thanks to social media and uh, the new technologies, uh, you know, that have come and with the advent of AI, and and rest of the technology, it has become you know lot more uh, relevant for crisis communication to be more live wire. Uh, Subir, I would like to begin with you. You know, if uh, if you can talk about how how these things have you know changed or evolved the crisis communication manual. Sure, uh, I think with the advent of this social media, artificial intelligence, and uh, with the you know the quick uh, you know the fake news phenomenon. These are all adding up to the, you know, the entire bouquet of crisis communications uh, managers. So, I would say that, you know, uh, 
the way it is gradually shifting uh, is that you know the element of you know when and where and at what time we need to kind of communicate that is becoming more crucial and therefore uh, many a times we see that you know though we are getting enabled by artificial intelligence or social media but i think as professionals that expertise that experience and that you know the sense of timing about what to say where to say whether to say those kind of things will still remain the same but definitely the time uh, to react these days are definitely going yeah, it's, down it's it's going it has gone down drastically yeah, so yeah. anandita you would like to add uh, something that uh, you know how how tech is enabling or has become uh, a problematic thing yeah yeah uh, well i would say uh, both not tech is not becoming a problematic but uh, now we have digital stakeholders you know so uh, what as uh, the technological advancement happened uh, we have progressed on other fields also because you see there's a res behavioral research because you know the behavioral pattern of the audience because of the real time communication or uh, channels has changed they have as he rightly said very vocal not only very vocal uh, we know uh, citizen journalism we know how they make an make, many people are opinionated you know so uh, the organizations they have to go as per the pattern and i think many organizations they are building up a community uh, if i may call a pre crisis it's not a pre crisis but building up a community is building up their credibility because they know so nowadays people have stopped people uh, have, you know no. uh, reaching out to media or people have you know yes. lot of avenues yes. to get the news and these kind of new influencers are are become have become a source hence yeah. community yes. becomes important a community yeah. becomes important so what happens is when the credibility is built even a crisis crisis can happen so even if the crisis has happened people believe that okay there are credible people there are credible brand we see the face of the uh, crisis you know the leadership uh, we see who's the uh, leader he comes out on social media so he can talk he can own the crisis he can uh, talk about the immediate measures and as someone said already um, um, either subir or rafiq that empathy empathy plays a very major role so i think that stakeholder approach that's digital stakeholder approach if we keep i think that definitely uh, will help in building up uh, what we really intend in terms of handling crisis uh, sushar i would like to get your thoughts on you know how you are building your uh, you know digital ecosystem in, in in this kind of scenario so amit uh, i you know social media is uh, both uh, a challenge and an opportunity challenge as in uh, fake news and uh, rumors spread very fast on social Absolutely. media and uh, uh, but it gets it gives brands an opportunity to directly uh, communicate with the consumer customer and uh, clear misinformation and provide updates so uh, there are both positives and negatives and it's completely changed how you handle crisis uh, however you know i coming from the old school think that you know you know ai tools can help you uh, assist you a lot but uh, nothing works like personal relationships with journalist with the media Absolutely. you know investing uh, your time and the experience and, yeah. yeah so that is what helps when uh, you're handling a crisis you need to get a story good story out or bad story stop or you need or, to stop a story yeah so uh, you know that is that is where uh, that is the challenge and that is what we've signed up for and uh, we uh, we do get such request very often and yeah. and day in, day uh, out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh the our uh, you know that is a relationship we should all invest in absolutely yeah. absolutely we we got to invest in relationship with and not uh, digital relationship uh, more of physical relationship we should work on so uh, ravi i would like to hear from you on uh, you know relationships and tech <laughs> let me answer the tech first because the relationship is something that we've been talking about in pr industry for 30 years i think relationships matter and that will never go down but the the entire um, construct of that relationship has changed at least i have seen it over the years earlier it was more about one to one now it's more based on what do you bring on the table as far as the relationship is concerned i think as far as tech is concerned it's it's a boon and a bane both for crisis management 
the boon is that it allows you to one gather information and conversations that are happening very quickly and therefore it helps you to uh, prepare a response strategy. The other is to get the information across to your audience has also become easier. But the tough part is that there is control over the narrative is not fully in your hands anymore. So I may today send out a statement which may not land the way I had assumed it to because people will have views and they will express that. Having said that, I think having that North Star strategy for your organization and going back to that when you're in crisis, I think is one of the most important things to do. As far as relationships are concerned, if you have been communicating with your audience, and when I say audience, not only consumers, as I said, everybody, on a regular basis, during the times of crisis, generally you have people to who are not going to be at least that aggressive yeah. or to bat for you. Yeah, yeah. To back, to back for you, they are, they are like your ambassadors yes. to, who will always stand by you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so I think coming to a, a, a very uh, you know, pertinent with regard to you know, how uh, you know, once the crisis ha has happened, you know, how, what all, what all two, three things that a brand should look at while rebuilding that trust, rebuilding that reputation, you know, because building a reputation takes a lot of good deeds. You know, and you need just one bad deed to, to, to destroy your reputation, you know. So, so I think it becomes very important to, uh, you know, to, to keep one or two key things according to you, what you think are important to, to, to help brands build reputation or individual. You know, we have seen, we keep seeing a lot of examples uh, in the panel before this, uh, you know, a lot of examples were there. So, so yeah. You can start, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, two things. Uh, identify your stakeholders whom you need to talk to very clearly. Second, have your narrative in place. Third is choose the right mode of communication for narrating with them. These are very important because you have to speak to them quickly, fairly quickly. Uh, decide upon the frequency in which you are going to speak to them. Uh, have your narratives in place. I mean, don't misfire. You know, and it's not necessary that you have to have the top guy in front of the media or in front of uh, the public. Yeah, at the very rather end. don't talk, yeah. Yeah, so be very calibrated about the whole thing. So these are a few things that I have learned from my experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there are a few like My favorite topic, that's why I snatched it away. I think um, most organizations, and especially in India, I've seen this more, we believe that the crisis is not going to happen. And therefore, we do zero preparation for crisis. Even the, the Tata example that was given, I think in the environment that they were coming out with the ad, they knew that there could be backlash. The question is, were we prepared for the backlash? Did we do our preparation training, question answers, uh, various scenarios, and plan for it? I think most of the organizations don't do that. The second thing that the organizations don't do, in my opinion, is once you've gone through a crisis, crisis is not over. It is that flare up, that fire or that, you know, burst of fire has got over. What are you doing to ensure that similar thing doesn't happen again doesn't or happen. similar crises don't happen again? Absolutely. A lot of organizations don't pay attention on crisis recovery, which yeah, is pe equally people, people believe, you know, when, when the bridge will come, we'll cross it. Yeah. Exactly. That's the issue. And I, I see a change in CEOs where they're getting more and more involved when the crisis is there, but I think that's being pushed by the fact that today we talked about activism, we talked about the CEO leading the communication from the front, uh, being the face of the company, but I think they are now more bothered about the crisis, so at least we have them sitting in the meetings and giving us a brief. There's Earlier a behavioral the change, I would say, there's a behavioral change which oh, has yes. happened at the top level. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. They have become more and more aware how crisis can impact Absolutely. them much more. Earlier, the, the ostrich thing, if I hide, maybe things won't happen. Tushar, you would like to add something? So, uh, I think uh, in the aftermath of a crisis, rebuilding trust is paramount. Um, a company has to demonstrate accountability, transparency, empathy, and uh, an intention to rectify a situation. Uh, 
you, there is no harm in accepting and apologizing uh, for Absolutely. a mistake. But that that call is usually not taken at our level. You know, somebody who has little understanding of the media would take that call, and then we 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 are the people who are forced to uh, take that stand and go out and uh, 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 we we take the brunt of yeah. that. So. Uh, Effective communication is crucial to, throughout the recovery, and uh, that communication has to be with not only the consumer, but uh, the government, the ministry, the regulator. All the stakeholders. Uh, all the stakeholders. Yeah. Anandita, final words. Okay. Uh, I feel that companies, uh, honestly, uh, especially uh, you know, after the advent of social media, the digital mediums, they have much more I mean, a nuanced understanding of what to be done and how a crisis has to be handled, to be very honest. Where I think we can work on is, and when he's saying it is not our, uh, we are no one, it's not about we or them. Maybe as communicators, we need to, we, because we are the repetition custodian as uh, corporate Absolutely, communication. Yeah. So we can guide them, we can suggest, uh, we can, if I may not uh, say advice, uh, post communication activity hardly any companies they have plans you know maybe a, an apology maybe uh, you know a thank you after the crisis is over and when the crisis is happening or just after that you know which we call uh, in uh, you know crisis parlance stealing the thunder accepting what has happened not being impulsive towards uh, the social media trolls or people are talking about staying calm Address what you need to say, how much to say, and what not to say is very important. And post-crisis, as I said, uh, thank you is very important or an apology. Great. That's that's a great final words. I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. We are coming to questions only. Yeah. All the times is up, but uh, glad to take your question. Yeah. So uh, I have this question for anybody who is interested. Um, I was hearing a lot of focus being given on relationship to manage crisis. We are also seeing that uh, in the media, there's a lot of movement. So today I have a relationship with somebody who has tomorrow moved into the corporate side. So should we put a lot of emphasis on relationship or should we put emphasis somewhere else also? Because I, I am of the generation where we worked with relationships a lot. And now the same guy who I used to go to to solve a problem is sitting in Samsung. Okay. So how do I solve that problem with Times of India anymore? No, uh, before so, that, Deepa, what do you mean by somewhere else? What is that place? I don't know. You have to tell me. You guys are the experts. So I think I, it's a I, mix I, of it. I think it's a mix of it and relationship stays. Because the Samsung guy may again come towards me to, to media at one point after. You never know. As, as it is by the, the, the change Mukherjee of the table is happening right now. Rafi, yeah, would you would like to add? Or, or, or actually, a peer agency. Actually, I wasn't because intending to, but I have a kind of a follow-up to what Deepa is saying. So, just uh, let, so let her let ask. This Rafi Sorry, answer. I'll let just her complete. Ask. I'll no, just no, complete you can this. ask, I'll try and answer both. Thanks, Rafi. I'll just complete this. Uh, just to follow up on what Deepa is saying, I think, and, you know, as people, ex-journalists on the stage as well, if there is a really difficult, challenging story about especially a listed company or a big company, I doubt any journalist worth their name would give that story up for or their byline. It's their career. At most, they would do is listen if you have a valid perspective or a quote or a background briefing or whatever. That's the max. So would we be focusing, is that relationship dependent or is that messaging dependent? Well, if you remember when I spoke about crisis, I said it's no longer media management. It goes much beyond that. So most of our relationships that we have, we have with the media person. And in my handling of crisis, when I was in Copcom, I was handling only crisis because that is what I was hired for. And I realized that all my relationships fell to the wayside. Even when I had used my uh, media buying agency to put pressure on the publication not to print the story. The journalist went and printed it on his LinkedIn, on his whatever platforms he could. When I said relationships, relationships help the media person understand your organization. 
and therefore when a crisis breaks there are possibilities that he is not going to make wild allegations in his story or if somebody comes to him with some wild allegation he is going to measure it before he responds to it that's where the relationships help when you are in crisis no relationship will help you get out of the crisis I think so also, it doesn't work. Uh, rightly, Minali, you said, uh, you know, we cannot go and tell someone to stop the story. That's a very bad PR practice. Absolutely. What we can, uh, the relationship helps in getting our perspective and at least carrying our code because in most cases, the company codes are not carried. So people have a very lopsided perception. So at least for the balance view that relationship helps, I personally feel. I honestly have never told any journalist to kill a story. Even if my uh, organizations or the CEOs told me. It's absolutely, I, I say if, uh, uh, when I was at airport, that if, uh, you know, the user development fee is your bread and butter, that is their bread and butter. Or uh, for similar, similar uh, in examples absolutely. for different organizations. Absolutely. And yeah, as, uh, as you said earlier that, you know, saying thank you is very important, yeah. So thanks everyone for your attention. One, one last thing. When you say relationship, we are only talking about media. Now the cohorts have changed. There are nameless, faceless handles. So Please reflect on relationships in the, in, in the midst of yeah, Relationships it, across spectrum. Agree, 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 Deepa. Yeah. And that's what I first in my, when I spoke, I said digital stakeholders. That's very important Across to build spectrum, up a yeah. community based on the digital uh, stakeholders and your reputation, uh, uh, pre-community development. We are, we are, time is up, I think. We I'll just take 30 oh. seconds to answer that. I think relationships today have become far more transactional than they used to be. Keeping that in mind, if a company has been communicating less, there is a, recently I went and trained a, a, a chemical company who are very, very prone to crisis because pills and things like that. They have, one of the lessons that the CEO took away with him and I hope he's gonna implement is, he said, I'm gonna concentrate on communicating to my target audiences about the potential areas where the crises can appear and what we as an organization are doing about it on a daily basis. That's where the relationships count with the digital world because people pick up what is there on the digital space when you're in a crisis and throw it all over the place as well. So, that, that's a generational change also. But yeah, thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks a lot.